just want to go ahead and um, talk about Iowa Business for Clean Energy which started about a year ago. And it was designed to start this conversation. And our mantra is, is right up here. The belief that the company that has a, a low carbon footprint at the lowest cost is going to be at a competitive advantage. So that helps focus and, and channel our, our, our focus as, a, as an organization. And really our mission is to help educate as well as encourage the dialogue to figure out how Iowa gets there in the future. Well, we often say we don't have uh, uh, the answers today, uh, but we think we have important questions that we're asking. So I would, at this point, like to uh, introduce, uh, first off, I want to introduce some, some guests are here. Senator Giddens, again, thanks for coming. Do we have any more legislators that I'm missing? Um, and I, I want to uh, uh, thank and recognize Iowa Utilities Board Chair, Jerry Huser, and Board Member Dick Logier. Thank you for being uh, uh, part of this conversation. Obviously, they're the uh, two of the three people who are just a critical part of, of Iowa's electric future. I also um, would like to oh, thank Jennifer Easler, who's the uh, consumer advocate uh, and leads the Office of uh, Consumer Advocate here in Iowa and represents the ratepayers' interests. So thank you. Uh, the team, I do want to thank uh, Rob Zaley, who many of you have connected with. It's been such an important part of getting Iowa Business for Clean Energy started. Uh, a, a new member to the team, Amanda Swanziger, who uh, has helped make this uh, event a success. And many of you in the energy efficiency world know Amanda well. And then the Concept Works team, uh, we've got Eric, Christina, who did the logistics for this, a big thanks, and, and Trey, who's doing the video. Uh, so I, I just want, before I introduce the agenda, highlight kind of two issues of why this is a critical time for Iowa at this point. Let, let's look at it from a cost perspective. Um, every electric utility in the country has to file reports with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. And when they file them, they, they report the revenue they receive for each class um, of rate payer um, and, and the amount of kilowatt hours sold. Across the country, they have a consistent basis. There's industrial customers, there's commercial customers, which are medium and small business. And when we say medium business, it includes I-80 truck stop, it includes uh, the high V grocery stores, okay? It includes the mom and pop uh, shop at the corner. And then you have residential rates. If you look at the residential rates in Iowa, you see Mid-American has some pretty competitive rates um, relative to other, IOU is investor-owned utilities, that's short for investor-owned utilities. If you're in a land territory, you're, if you're a commercial, a residential customer, you're paying over 50% more than your comparable competition down the road in the American territory. And this is going to be concerning. It clearly creates a competitive disadvantage. Uh, alliance rate, industrial rates are closer, but they're still, I think, approximately 20% higher than mid American. And, and as transportation electrifies, that's even going to become a bigger a challenge for those communities. If we go to the next chart, you just see that that wasn't always the case. This is a chart I think the Office Consumer Advocate presented uh, or submitted as, as part of a filing a few years ago. This shows the trend for residential rates. The blue line is is aligned uh, rates, uh, and and the yellow line is an American. Uh, we show this not because oh look what's happened over the last 20 years. But to highlight decisions utilities make, some in their control, some out, over time makes a big difference. In the conversation we're starting today, in the direction we hopefully help encourage the state to move isn't about the next year or five years, it's really about where Iowa and our communities are gonna be 10 or 20 years from now. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and skip the last slide just to get us back on track and, and move to our agenda where this morning we're going to have uh, two uh, really gurus in this industry 
And as you talk to different people, they all say, oh yeah, I know Ryan. Oh yeah, I know Doug. Um, Ryan Katowski is the managing director at the Advanced Energy Economy, uh, which is a national association of businesses whose mission is to help make the energy we use secure, clean, and affordable. Uh, he manages their state regulatory work and is focused on accelerating regulatory business model innovation in the electric power sector. So he, uh, he works through data-driven analysis, research, and really thought leadership. Uh, and so, and prior to, to joining um, the advanced energy economy, he spent 20 years consulting with both the advanced energy industry, utilities, and public, uh, in the public sector. And then he's re, uh, he actually has an engineering degree and a master's of science from Princeton. So uh, we're really pleased to have Ryan. And then Doug will be our second speaker today. Doug Scott uh, is the vice president of electricity and efficiency with the Great Plains Institute. And um, he does um, electric business model development, grid modernization. It's exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, in fact, he's worked on, uh, and maybe is still working with E21 initiative. That's Minnesota's effort to do just this, to help better align utility business models with public interest. He was appointed chair of the Illinois Commerce Commission in 2011 by Governor Quinn. And so that's equivalent, that's, that's our, our, our utilities board. So, and then he served as the director of the Iowa Environmental Protection, or the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency prior to that. And so he's a graduate of Tulsa and he has a JD from Marquette. So what they'll be doing this morning is both talking about how our grid is changing, um, how that needs, that as a result, we need to change the way we've been regulating this grid for decades and decades to respond to that. And then they'll talk about some of the different models that, it would, that we can move to and give some, talk about specific states, what other states are doing. This conversation is happening across the country. It just hasn't started in Iowa. And then at lunch, uh, we are fortunate the uh, former chair of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission who will be joining us via Zoom. So he'll be talking about really those challenges from the federal perspective uh, and then he'll be available for questions. Uh, so that'll be lunch. We've got Barada's bringing some wraps. We'll have gluten-free wraps as well for those folks who are gluten-free and vegetarians. So hopefully uh, that could address. And then after lunch, uh, I know some of the people um, will have to depart at that point, but we're gonna pull together, have small group discussions, um, and, and then as a, as a large group, uh, really talking about the conversation that we have this morning.